I think that uh, we're just too dumb to make it and we need a miracle. And the only thing I'm optimistic about is that there might be a miracle. And we call ourselves an intelligent species. But how intelligent is it really to know we are destroying the very fabric of life on Earth and then to continue doing it? We've gotten on this treadmill and we don't have a lot of consciousness about it. It's almost like technology has taken over and people are in the flow. What is happening? Something is going on. Can you feel the way? The World Wide Web is a miracle that just happened on us, so that's one possibility. Now, chaos theory, that's another miracle. You don't invent these things on purpose. They just happen in their own time. And just, just, just when we need it, here it is, a new tool. Is anybody paying attention? Well, actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm doing is exerting myself. I mean, there are a lot of very good people in mathematics. There are a lot of very good people in environmental movements. There are not too many people uh, trying to bridge them. And I'm not trying to bridge them. I'm trying to say that this is important. I'm trying to get people's attention so that mathematics is not lost. I'm trying to make people aware that the computer revolution is the most exciting thing that ever happened to mathematics since paper and pencil. I think, I think we're prisoners of our, our culture and we don't want to change. And we don't, I think basically we don't, what it comes out of the bottom line is we don't want to suffer. And we see the existing system as change, we see change may involve discomfort. And so we'd rather stay with the existing system rather than risk discomfort even though you know, it may destroy us. I mean, a good analogy there is somebody who's smoking. You know, somebody will keep smoking cigarettes knowing it may kill them rather than go through the discomfort of giving up, the withdrawal symptoms. So I think it's, we don't want to suffer, but we, we always often look for the short-term ease of suffering or the short-term pleasures rather than looking at what is really in our long-term interests. Mm -hmm. And I think this is... It's what I call the basic error in human thinking, and this is what's indoctrinated into us by our culture. It's endemic through our culture, a belief system or mindset that says whether or not you're at peace depends upon what you have, what you do, what you're experiencing in the world, your interaction with the world. And I think what all the great spiritual traditions have said is, no, it's the other way around. Whether or not you're at peace depends upon how you perceive things. We don't yet have much of a philosophy of technology. It's like it, ha it has its own momentum. It's like it's self-propelling. It's like I have a self-propelling mower, uh, but I'm there, you know. Uh, but I could hook it up in some way that it would go on without me, and people do that. But it's a dangerous thing to do. So you have to be able to cut it off, but we don't seem to be able to cut this one off. I think that we're at the evangelistic early stage of this and there's a lot of cheerleading going on. And if you think dialectically, this is the thesis. And Hegel, the philosopher, talked about the antithesis, which is the opposite, the critique that is beginning to emerge among some people like uh, uh, Stephen Talbot has written a book called The Future Does Not Compute. And that out of this thesis, which more people are involved in now, this rush to be involved in e-commerce and the whole world, but the dialectic is beginning to move and there's some antithetical thinking coming, and that out of that some sort of synthesis can come.